is Psalm 16. Now, Psalm 16 is this beautiful chapter, and honestly, I don't want to waste any time. I just want to dive right into it. So starting in verse 8, it says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad. I rejoice. My body rests safely. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow the Holy One to rot in the grave. You will show me the way of life. Grant me the joy of your presence and the pleasure of living with you forever. This is absolutely a beautiful piece of scripture because this is a psalm written by David. So King David of Israel is writing this psalm almost like a prophecy because it's so beautiful because if you look at three different verses you can literally see us you can see Jesus and you can see the future of what God has in store for us it's absolutely beautiful so looking in verse 10 it says for you will not leave your soul among the dead we are that soul we are the souls that if we believe in Jesus Christ he dwells in our soul it says in Ephesians 2 that we are dead in our trespasses and we are walking among the world doing earthly things in our trespasses in our sins and so Jesus not leaving our soul he does not want to leave our soul among the dead so how does he do that he sends his one and only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. See, Jesus, as we sinned, as we sinned in the garden, we kept on sinning and sinning, we were separated from God because our God is so perfect and so mighty that he can't even be with sin. And so he was separated from sin, but the only way that we would be able to, because the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life, the only way that we would be able to be with God again is through a perfect sacrifice. Jesus, Jesus coming down, part of God coming down, not losing any of his, of his God deity, but only accepting the humanity of the restrictions of humanity, coming down to earth, being perfect, blameless, and dying on a cross so that we will not be left among the dead because we are like the walking dead of this earth. But then it goes on as for you will not leave my soul among the dead. That is us. As we walk across this earth, as if we believe in Christ, we are made alive. We are made truly alive in Christ because we are no longer dead, but alive in him. And then it keeps on going and says, or allow your holy one to rot in the grave. And how beautiful is that? Because Jesus died was buried in a grave. He actually died. He died on a cross. The worst, the worst punishment ever was beaten. Could barely even tell who he looked like. Was crucified, nailed to a cross. Put in a grave, guarded, sealed with, Ro with a Roman seal. Put guard, guard, Roman guards around the grave so that no one could even touch him. And he rose from the dead. He defeated death. So. Our God sent his one and only son to believe in him. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. See, if Jesus was the way and then died, where did the way go? But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He was dead for our sins. And then he rose again on the third day. So God did not even let the Holy One rot in the grave but yet he defeated the grave. It even goes on into verse 11 and it says, you will show me the way of life that you and grant me the joy of your presence. See, Jesus didn't stay here forever. After 40 days after he rose from the dead, he spoke to so many people, 500 people it says at one time, he spoke to his disciples still doing all these different miracles, telling us of what we need to do on this earth telling us the, to go and make disciples, to go tell people about Jesus and how they can have an eternal life and that no matter what sins they have done, that they are forgiven, but they must declare Jesus as their Lord, drop what they're doing and follow him. And so it says that you are showing us the way of life. You grant me the joy of your presence. You show me the way of life. Jesus came down to earth as a human 
as 100% human and 100% God, Jesus was tempted in every single way imaginable. And I know you're thinking like, no, Jesus could not have been tempted because I'm looking at pornography. There's a story of a, of a uh, adulterous woman that was thrown at, at his feet. And he's not just seeing an adulterous woman that's like, oh man, she's pretty. She's seeing that that is a beautiful that is a beautiful child of God. He could be tempted to go after that girl. Or, no, well, I'm tempted because I want the affirmation of others. Satan, as, he, as, he, as Jesus is in the wilderness, he's being tempted by Satan of, look all that you can have. Look what I can give you. Look what I can give you, even though God owns everything. So Jesus, being tempted in everything, shows us truly how to live this life. If you ever come to a, to a question in your life of thinking, man, I don't even understand how to do this. Like, how, how on earth am I going to get through this? No one understands me. There's one person that does, that's literally been through every single thing. And I guarantee you, if you just ask Jesus, Jesus, how did, how did you do this? How did, how did you get through lust? How did, how did you get through gluttony? How did you get, like, Jesus, what happened whenever you were tempted to lie? or to steal or to cheat. How did you do that? Because it says that you will show me the way of life and grant me the joy of your presence. So again, Jesus didn't stay here for the entire for ever. He's not here right now. But the Holy Spirit, he sent the Holy Spirit down to be with us. And if you accept Jesus, if you if you believe that Jesus died on a cross and rose again, in three days, then the presence of God through the Holy Spirit dwells within you. Jesus being the intercessor that we can talk to God now, he, he dwells within us. So the presence of him is our joy. We can go through our day, no matter what trial, no matter what's happening, no matter how many breakups or family problems or whatever, or grades, that we can count on Jesus and we can count on the Holy Presence that he's right here with us and he's right there with you and we can count that as joy but then it even goes on and the pleasures of living with you forever man for the wages of sin is death but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord Romans 6:23. see we were dead in our transgressions. But Jesus coming down to earth, taking our penalty of death because a wage is what you what you need to pay, like what you earn. So we get, we receive death because of our sin. We earn death because of our sin. But Jesus said, no, don't worry. I have a gift for you. I'll pay this for you. I'm going to go die on a cross for you so that I can live with you forever. But all you have to do is believe in me. Believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, that he is the Alpha and the Omega. And there is no God above him. There is nothing greater than him. That he loves you unconditionally. That he died on a cross and rose again in three days. If you believe this, then chase after him. And you will have eternity in heaven with him. Because this earth, it will fade. It says that our life is but a vapor. This, everything that we have right now will go away. Except Jesus. Jesus is eternal. Our God is eternal. Believe in him and you will have eternity with him. You will have eternal life with him.